Good morning. Does God still love his people? Today we're at Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. Israel was holiness to the Lord, the first fruits of his increase, all that devour him will offend. Disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. God gives Jeremiah a message of hope for Israel. Hard things are coming, but first he begins with a message of hope. Very important. He remembers that earlier time when there was a connection between, between God and his people, a connection of love. He reminds him of that time when, when God was the groom and Israel was the bride. Israel was holiness to the Lord. She was under God's protection. Those who would assault her, they would be punished and punished hard. God was her faithful protector. Now, this is a very important reminder because God is, God is allowing, if not even sending, he's sending these foreign armies, these alien armies in to, to chasten her. And so, first of all, he reminds her of his love. It's going to seem as though he doesn't love Israel anymore, but actually the fact is that she has forsaken him. God's people have gone away from God. God hasn't gone away from his people. His people have gone away from him. Israel has forsaken her protector, and he's reminding them right here that I was your protector in those days. I delivered you from bondage in Egypt. I brought you out of slavery. I brought you through the wilderness. I delivered you because I love you. Jesus always comes to us in a way to inculcate hope. He wants us to, to have hope. A lot of things in our world are fighting against our having hope, but God is always seeking to show us that we should have hope. You know, even his judgments are not sent just raw, just straight at us. Instead, he comes, he begins with honey. He starts by reminding Israel of the positive, the positive past that she has left behind. So he doesn't start with a hammer. He uses both negative and positive appeals. And you know, we need both kinds. Ten Commandments has some negative and some positive ones in it. Even Jesus will use the negative and positive both. Those are parts of God's toolbox. Now here we are in chapter 2, and it's not until chapter 2 that we come to Jeremiah's first public prophesying. But it's interesting that the very first message God gives Jeremiah to give to Israel the very first message is a message, a very positive message of hope. God wants to come and start with that. People often ignore those positive appeals, but God will start with it anyway. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for coming to your people all declined in degeneracy and apostasy and idolatry, but just the same, Lord, you still come to them and the first thing is positive. Thank you for that. Lord, help us to be right. Help us to respond to the positive items. May, your tool, may you not need to dip into your toolbox for the negative ones. Please, Lord, be with your people. And when you come to us, remember, we're just flesh. We're easily broken. But Lord, work for us and be hard with us if you have to, to bring us to your side. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God still loves us. He, he tries to get our attention. Will we do better than the people of the kingdom of Israel in Jeremiah's time? Let's continue to study. God be with you today.